Welcome to Chasing Limits on Shaw TV. I'm JP Parsonage and I'm joined with by Chuck Lee, the president of the Alberta Whitewater Association. And we're here for the K1 Open Women's Alberta Provincial Kayaking Slalom Championships. Chuck, tell us a little bit about what we're gonna see today from the Slalom Championships. Well, this is a minute and a half to two minute race. Uh, it's on the Canassus River here in uh, just outside of Calgary. It's a beautiful location. The river kind of bends around the Canoe Meadows uh, campsite. And uh, we have the you know top Be women in Alberta coming here. Best of two runs, and our women today are going to be Jocelyn Taylor, Gemma Groshmal, Shannon Wagers, Renee O'Oler, Hannah Penner, Roxanne Esch, Jasmine Harvey, Veronica Ozkowski, and Haley Daniels. So we've got a good good list of people out there, Chuck. Our first athlete of today is Jocelyn Taylor. Tell us a little bit about Jocelyn, Chuck. Jocelyn comes from Calgary. She is uh, 13 years old, and she paddles with the Waterworks Kayak Club out of Calgary. All right, one single touch already for Jocelyn. So single touch, two-second time penalty, missing a gate, 50-second time penalty. What's the difference between the red and the green gates, Chuck? The red gates you have to go upstream through. So you can see Jocelyn here. She's going up through the gate and then out to the current, and then the green gates you go down through them. I see. And use of the current makes for the best time, correct? Yes, that's right. So what we're trying to do is trying to look at how the competitors use the water, use the current to get to where they need to go. A little bit of a touch there too. Second touch for Jocelyn. Having a strong run so far. The average time for one of these runs is anywhere from 80 to 120 seconds, correct Chuck? That's correct. These junior women uh, like Jocelyn here, they're gonna be in that higher range. Uh, and then the K1 men's, the, the fast K1 men's are gonna be around 80 to 85, 90 seconds. All right, third touch there for Jocelyn. Having a really good run though. Yeah, it's a really powerful eddy and a really powerful current to get out into, so it's difficult and challenging, right? Mentally, it's really tough to, to push yourself up through that ed edge of the current. So all of these competitions are two rounds, correct, Chuck, and best time within the, the two rounds? That's right. So uh, so Justin will have this round sort of get familiar with what the, where the gates were and what's happening, and then she has a second run to improve upon that. Now, how much does strategy of... of getting in the line and using the river play into what's going on. Well, you see Jocelyn, just that time she went behind that gate and then she had to come up in the eddy to get up into it. And that put her in a good position for gates 13 and 14, but it cost her some time. Right, and down so around So she's down and around and then up, they threw this big S and then gate number 15. So she S's behind the rock and that's strategy for her to, to maximize the, the strength of the river I and see. get her where okay. she wants to go back-to-back -back upstream gates there to be fairly challenging. Yeah, now she's gonna finish it off here. And that's the Strong end of the right gates. push to the finish. All right, and Jocelyn Taylor with a final time of 2.12.23. A nice strong run for Jocelyn. We're gonna see her come back here and hopefully try and fix up a couple of those little touches, try and do a little bit cleaner run next time. <clears throat> yeah, it only shows a couple seconds of touches right now, but I'm sure the judges will add on to that. Our second athlete of the day, Gemma Groshmal, already underway here and paddling strong, really coming out of the gate hard. Yeah, Gemma's uh, been chasing Jocelyn for a couple of years now, and, and uh, the last race uh, she had Jocelyn's number, so it's just these two have been battling it out. They're both 13 years old. They both train out of Waterworks in Calgary, and uh, they've just been having a great time. Now, 13 years old, what's the average age for getting involved in whitewater rafting, or whitewater, or kayaking, excuse me? Whitewater kayaking, um, anywhere from eight to 80. Eight to 80, that's a very broad age range. Yeah, most of these kids started paddling somewhere around the age of uh, 11 or 12, and came out and started racing some of the easy races with us. And now they've you know had a couple seasons underneath their belt, and you can see it really with Gemma. She's come along strong. Gemma's really paddling well here. A very clean run so far. So, how does the Alberta Whitewater Association help out with getting started as far as uh, uh, kayaking goes? Well, the, the Alberta Whitewater Association is our provincial governing body, and we don't really do that much in terms of helping a, an individual athlete. But what we do is we try to give the support to the clubs. So our goal is to try and give as much support to clubs and infrastructure so that the clubs can go out there and actually do the hands-on work. But if people watching at home wanted to come out to Canoe Meadows and try this out? Oh, that'd be easy. How come would they do out. that? Come on out. Just, website? Uh, they would look at our website, www.albertawhitewater.ca. 
and uh, we can sure show you what we're doing and when we're doing it. Oh, there's a 50 there. She's oh. got to come back for that gate. She's nope. coming, trying to oh, come back to that gate, not. but I think she's decided to, to eschew it and take the penalty. That's unfortunate. She was right there, 14. too. She had been having a really clean run up until that point and then totally missed that gate. Lots of little touches here, right? This is not what we expect from Gemma. She should be a little smoother here. Uh, she's got a lot of good technique, and she should be staying on her lines a little bit more. She's just letting that water push her around a little bit too much. Not having her best run. No, here she comes to the finish. She's got pushing hard through the 18. finish. Gemma Groschmal now. All right, and Gemma's final time: 2:24 with with additions: 3:14.17. Yeah, you see how that 50-second penalty just drops her right out of contention. Yes, yeah, so missing those gates is a big one. Our third competitor now coming out of the gates, Shannon Wagers. What about Shannon, Chuck? Shannon comes from Innisfil. She's uh, 17 years old. Um, she's been a nice, strong competitor for a number of years now. Keeps on paddling with the Cottonwood Club out of uh, Innisfil and has had some really good role models up there to paddle with. Now, where are we seeing most of our competitors from? The Alberta area, or are we seeing any uh, American competitors today? This Today, no Americans are coming up, uh, but we do have a couple of people from BC that have uh, come over for the race. All right, a couple of BC competitors. Shannon doing really well right now. Set having herself a very up. nice clean run. She so yeah. approached that fairly cautiously, right? We're getting herself set up so she can get over here in good time for this gate. Now she's got to spin back in so she can turn back through this gate, and when she backs through this gate, then she can go out to the next gate. So backing through a gate, the challenge of backing through a gate, is it? do they have to go through backwards, or should they be able to come, or can they be able to come around? Uh, they can either go through forwards or backwards. It doesn't matter as long as they're going through it in the right direction. So you can't go uh, upstream. Upstream through a green through gate. Through a green gate. Gotcha. But you can that. go backwards through a green gate, or the other way around, for up backwards through a red gate too, for that matter. Rules clarification. Now we have some of these red gates are really in tight to these rocks. Yeah, it's tough, right? Because you, you have to push yourself right up into that. And you see how Shannon really approached that with just a little bit of ginger touch to it. Very tight turns having to come through here. Shannon having a very nice run so far. Now, how often do uh, uh, the various teams get down here to train? Well, this year we're having to get down here quite a bit to train because there's no water elsewhere in the province. So with the drought that we were experiencing, a lot of our regular rivers that we would train and paddle on just have got no water in them. So this is a really great facility then to have to be able to be able to control the water levels like this to be able to train. That's right. Because of uh, the fact that Trans Alta manages the river here, uh, Trans Alta gives us an opportunity to be in the river and oh, 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 and a flip here from Shannon. Uh, but, and she rolls up, but trying to ride uh, herself. Come on, get that paddle up. out of there. Yep, there she is. Right above the uh, big up. rock here. So Coming back up. around, she's made the save though. She'll take Coming a couple 50 second penalties she there because she missed some gates. A couple of gates there, yes. Was that a, a good roll by Shannon there? <laughs> no, it wasn't her best roll. That's Not her sure. best roll. She now, got typically up though, in right? that scenario, so, what would you want to do? Well, you want to hang on to the paddle, right? So she got the paddle, and then she got the paddle stuck, and so she lost control of it. So it just made it just awkward. It was just a really awkward position because she had no paddle left in her hand to help her, help her get up. All right, and in through the finish now, Shannon Wagers. With additional times added on, a final time of 438.75. Our next competitor, Rinio Oler. Coming in now, tell us a little bit about Rinio, Chuck. Rinio's from Calgary. She's uh, 16 years old. Uh, just got her driver's license, so I remember that. <laughs> so we're quite excited about her getting her driver's license this so year. So one of the older competitors <laughs> here? Uh, one of the, yeah, she's been Little paddling bit. a long time. Her dad has was a uh, paddler from a long time ago as well. He'll be racing later this afternoon. Uh, excellent. Keep it in the family sport. There's a lot of family Ooh. sport, or a lot of family aspect that goes with this sport, is there not? Yeah, there's, you know, a lot of uh, parents get their kids out and get them paddling, and, you know, it's always a question of, you know, the kids taking to it, but 
Renio missed that last gate. She tried to do a back surf over to it, and she just could not make that big That's back surf. That's going to cost her another 50 seconds. No, I think she got the gate. It just oh. took her time, extra time, to go back in the eddy and go back up for it. Coming, Coming down here to hard. Cardwell Corner into this really strong eddy here, and a big pour over. Now, it takes an exceptional amount of strength to come back out of the current like that, doesn't it? Uh, no, it doesn't. It's you're working oh, with the water. And another flip. And there, and see there how we much see a little bit better recovery. <laughs> yes. A little bit quicker recovery that time when you hold on to the paddle. <laughs> excellent, <laughs> excellent recovery. Good job, Rio. All right, now trying to stay as clean as possible into this upstream. Yeah, she's got to want to go high because she's got to get Good way over to the other 11. side. That sets her up to go backwards through that gate, and then she's going to surf back across this hole. Get Use this of the gate. river is so important in using those currents to, to push you side to side across the river. Yeah, and you want to kind of, there's a little imaginary line in the river where you wanted the, the water to take you, and you got to stay on that line. Does that come more with experience and time, Chuck? Do you find that uh, the, the older competitors have a better idea of how the... Uh, the lay of the water is yeah it's it's interesting uh you know it's uh the water has a mind of its own I mean, until you understand where it's going to take you you kind of let it take you where it wants all right and reneo with a final time of 226.04 puts her in good position you're watching the alberta provincial championships kayaking and slalom competition on show canna dream has a wide selection of rvs that are available for purchase New and used Class B and B plus van conversions, Class C motorhomes, and truck campers that are ready to accommodate many lifestyles. Visit our website for more information at canadream.com slash sales. Wycom Solutions, a proud supporter of the Chasing Limits series and Alberta Amateur Sports. Visit wycom.ca for details on their full list of communication products and services. Our next competitor now, Hannah Penner, coming strong out of the gates. Yeah, Hannah's our top junior in Canada, so uh, Hannah will show us some uh, some really powerful paddling here. She comes out of Pincher Creek, Pincher and she Creek. trains with the Pincho Crow Creekers the kind of club. <laughs> An interesting sounding club. All right. So this t this gate right here, very tight to the rock. An exceptional uh, uh, technical challenge, isn't it? Yeah, you got to get your boat in and out, and you can't taste the. You don't want to hit the rock at the same time. You you want to make sure you're uh, not touching the gate either. Is there any special way to to help ensure that you don't hit the rock, or is that all a positioning thing? It's just all a positioning thing. It's the way you, you approach the gate, so you want to approach from as wide an angle as possible, and then drive the boat into the to the eddy. See how fast she comes in there. She's going to power out, power out of this and let that current just take her downstream and just accelerate with the current. Hannah's really cutting strong in here. She's putting up a very good time right now. Very clean run as well. Yeah, I saw uh, one, one two second touch penalty, earlier, yeah. penalty, but yeah, she's a very strong competitor. She placed uh, in Australia in the 2014 World Championships. She was 19th. And then with a couple of mistakes in uh, Brazil in 2015, she was uh, back in the 30s. So at what point can a competitor like Hannah start competing in world championship and or Olympic events? Uh, the juniors uh, start at the age of 15. Okay. Uh, at uh, world championships for juniors. And then they go that through that until they're 18. And then they move up, uh, they can go then to the U23, which is the 19 to 23 year olds. And at any time, if they were good enough, they could actually make it onto their national team and onto the Olympics. Oh, okay. So that uh, age is not a factor when it comes to Olympic trials. No, it's not. It's just skill and experience and, and uh, strength is the, the big things for the Olympics. Of course. And a good paddle by Hannah. Great time put up a 152.13. Hannah really showing strong, strong pulls there. Coming up next, Roxanne Esch hitting the start. Where's Roxanne out of Chuck? Roxanne's out of Fernie, and uh, she's come over here to, to paddle with us at Fernie on, in Alberta. And uh, she's a 
been an Alberta girl. She's originally from uh, Montreal. And uh, Roxanne is our oldest female competitor here today. Uh, she teaches school in Fernie and uh, just a charming lady. One small touch on gate number two so far, but otherwise a fairly clean start. Yeah, Roxanne's a former national team member. Uh, and she also was a pro professional paddler in the, uh, with, uh, back in freestyle. Now, I notice a little bit of differences in a couple of the boats so far. Chuck, what's, what, what's the difference between what Roxanne's using here and, say, some of the earlier boats? Well, all these boats are the, the glass solemn boats. Uh, so they're just a sm small difference in designs uh, here, but we haven't seen any of the recreational paddling boats. But you'll see older fiberglass boats, oh, yeah. nylon boats, correct, which are a little bit heavier. Yep. So the heavier the boat, a little bit easier to manage and keep you upright, whereas the, the fiberglass, a little bit easier flips. A little easier to flip, a little more edge on it, right? You can see how flat that back end of her boat is. Now, does that, uh, the long tip at the end, make it easier for them to cut through the water? Does it act as a tail? Uh, it acts, it gives them more speed in the water. And then the reason why it's so flat is just to try and keep it out of the way and, and to allow them to spin the boat on the, on the back end when they need to. So you can see, that we'll see later with the men, they're, they're, they got that boat a lot more on the vertical plane a lot because it's right. quite easy to spin at that point in time. Gotcha, using that, using that back end really like a tail as if... Right. Uh, as if they were a fish. A very nice run here by Roxanne. Yeah, Roxanne. A couple of small been touches, smooth. but otherwise she's hit every gate really What's strong. amazing is Roxanne had to go through some major back surgery. And there was some question if she'd ever be able to paddle again. And uh, she just went through a re hard rehabilitation program. Well, good for her. A great run by Roxanne here in the final time at 214.54. Puts her in very good position. Our next competitor, Jasmine Harvey, coming strong into the gate now. Where's Jasmine out of here? Jasmine's from Chilliwack. Uh, so she's come over here from BC Another to get BC a good race in. Yeah. And uh, Jasmine's 21 years old. She is um, run racing with the Chilliwack Center of Excellence, their paddling club there, and uh, has really just taken to the sport in the last couple of years. Now, do you find uh, uh, as competitors get older check like length of uh, or, or length of time spent in the boat uh, less or more isn't necessarily important more so uh, feeling for the water and, and uh, how they can quickly or, or more readily adapt to the currents it's just time in the boat right understanding where the boat's going to go and what you have to do with it and, and you know knowing how to, to push position yourself in the gates right so the gates kind of add a, an element of complexity to do it uh, so you know you're paddling a river you don't necessarily go into the eddy at that spot, right? So having the gate there forces you into the eddy at that particular spot and makes you work harder for it. Right, a little more challenging. Now, one of the great things about time in the boat in this location is this is a year-round location, isn't it? That's right. We have water here right through the wintertime, and you'll see uh, people out here uh, paddling in the dead of winter because we have these beautiful Chinooks, and when the river turns on, it just sort of flushes everything out, and then away you go. Paddling away. Gotta love those Chinooks, right? Yeah. Warm up to 20, get out on the river, even in January. Now, the water's always going to be cold. <laughs> so that's if you're they have flipping lots, for, yeah, right? that's right. That's what they have wetsuits for. Jasmine having a nice run. A couple of touches by Jasmine so far. Yeah, she's looking really good a here. very good run. Back up through the double reverse of 15-16. Now, do you find, Chuck, that uh, when these competitors get uh, uh, confident in themselves, they have easier runs, but if they start to, to accumulate little penalties, do you find that by the end they've started to fall apart? It just depends on the psyche of the individual, right? So some people, they, they just paddle and have fun with it, right? And other people, they take it really seriously, and they want to make sure that they're doing really well. So it's just a, a challenging uh, um, program. All right. Jasmine with the time of 216.81. And it looks like so far our leaderboard would look like Roxanne Ash coming in with 214.54 in first. Jasmine at 216.81 in second. And then we would have Jocelyn Taylor in at 218.23 in third. Yeah, but leading the board is going to be uh, Hannah Penner at 152. Ah, yes. Missing on Hannah. Right? Very well. Very good point. Veronica Oskowski right now. 
Veronica should put up a really good time. She's again out of Pincher Creek. She trains with the Pincher Crow Creekers. Uh, she's been a paddler there for probably almost 10 years now. Uh, and uh, she's a small little dynamo, but she <laughs> makes that boat go. Now, size really doesn't matter in this sport at all. Look right? how much Whether. that vertical is on the, on the vertical plane, right? She just popped that nose up in the air to make it now, spin. Try to duck her head down around that <laughs> post, but little touch there. You're right. I mean, size doesn't matter. It's, 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 uh, it's weight proportional, so a smaller person is going to get a little smaller boat. Uh, in terms of the overall volume, but they're just paddling a boat that's just cut down for their size. Right, right. And you can um, really see that si like being smaller sometimes can actually be an advantage, being a little bit lighter on the river that way. You can be pushed around by the water just that bit more. Yeah, it's a, it's a power to weight ratio. And so <laughs> have you got the power to push your weight around? There it is. Veronica doing really well here. Very, very fast run. So Veronica, Veronica you know, just trying, you know, push, 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 and into this little hole to get over to the gates. 13 and 14, and now she's got this S behind the rocks. So you want to have a lot of speed going in there, and you just really use the speed of the current to sort of slide across that, that eddy. Now, how much can you change the gates as far as uh, uh, what's available to you for options? Is where oh, the place gets? the gates are unlimited, right? The way we've got the race course set up now, is that we can put a gate anywhere we want to from uh, in the eddy or in the current, and raise it up, push it back. So it's a quite a dynamic system we have now. So there's a lot of freedom to really create some different challenging courses. All right, 209.53 for Veronica Ozkowski. And coming up next, we've got Haley Daniels. Tell us some about Haley. Chuck. Haley comes from Calgary. She's been training at the Waterworks Kayak Club for uh, 12, 13 years now. She is a uh, more mer member of the National Whitewater team. And right after this race, she'll leave for the uh, World Championships uh, in London. She's uh, racing in uh, C1 Women's. This is her other class, which is the Kayak K right, Women's. But the C1 is the canoe event. But she likes to come over here and race with the other girls in the, in the kayaks as well. So it's all good, right? So it's all part of the sport. And she just thrives on it she's really loved it all right so Haley is our final women's competitor in the k1 open women's slalom kayaking and she, like she has a good chance of knocking hannah out of first place right now so we got hannah in first place and then i think we've got ron uh veronica in second place right now and uh Haley's probably got a good chance of knocking those two down a couple of touches so far but otherwise really strong run Now, the, the speed of the river can vary depending on the volume of water, obviously. Uh, but how often or how much uh, does a competitor use the speed of the river to their advantage as far as, strategically speaking, getting into the currents? Uh, getting into the current, you really want to sort of push yourself into that fastest line possible. But then you want to set yourself up for the next gate. And so where you position yourself may not be in the fastest line. It may be something that's a little bit different because you want to sort of move uh, into a place where you're going to be uh, really fast into the next gate. Gotcha. Strategy, strategy, just like anything else. Yeah, and all these competitors walk the course with their coaches beforehand so they know where they're supposed to put the boat and where they want to have it. Big push to the finish by Haley. Puts up a great time, a 148.99. That's going to put her right into the first place position. That's right. If she doesn't have any penalties, then that she's been in a really good place. So right now we're going to go up to a leaderboard and have a look at our current leaders. Haley Daniels in with 148.99. Hannah Penner at 152.13 in second. We got Veronica Ozkowski at 209 in third. Does that sound like a, a typical leaderboard for this for you, Chuck? Yeah, that's where we should be. We should be looking. We should be seeing some things out of Jasmine and uh, Roxanne, perhaps. All right. Uh, well, we'll come back with round two of the K1 Women's Slalom Kayaking right after this short little break. Canna Dream has a wide selection of RVs that are available for purchase. New and used Class B and B plus van conversions, Class C motorhomes, and truck campers that are ready to accommodate many lifestyles. Visit our website for more information at canadream.com sales. 
Wycom Solutions, a proud supporter of the Chasing Limits series and Alberta Amateur Sports. Visit wycom.ca for details on their full list of communication products and services. You're building all these trails, you're building all these bike paths, uh, why not have a whitewater centre as well at the same time? So what the idea was for us as the Whitewater Association was to encourage whitewater sport and have a facility that we could use uh, throughout the year that people could come and train at and paddle at and have fun. The Whitewater Park is called uh, Canoe Meadows or the Canastas Whitewater Centre and it's located just south of the highway number one on the highway 40. When we were able to, to tap into some support from Lafarge, we were also able to support, get a lot of support from the Alberta government and Alberta Sport Recreation Parks and Wildlife Foundation has been instrumental in helping providing matching funds so that we could uh, enhance the work that we're doing. Uh, when we got the rock, we also have to have it delivered and we have to have it placed in, put in certain places. And so what we've done is we've sort of brought out this berm and that berm to sort of hold the river back above here and then it sort of falls over this edge and as it falls over this edge it creates a wave. And it also creates a lot of speed in the river and each one of the rock berms creates an eddy, creates a wave, creates a feature for us to play on in our kayaks. And so right here, these three or four rocks create a wave. So the water comes up over here on top of this and it builds and it crashes down right here. And below here, a beautiful wave forms up that you can surf on, you can do trick moves on, you can have a lot of fun playing here. But uh, lots of logs and debris fall into rivers over time and we sort of manicure this place on a regular basis to make sure that it is safe and comfortable for people that are going for a swim or happen to have uh, problems with their boating. We see lots of commercial rafts as well as uh, people coming to raft on their own, but the more focus has been on kayaking and some on uh, open canoeing, whitewater canoeing. We're seeing surfing boards now being adapted to, to come to the river and we're seeing some people with their sup boards, but the water's pretty cold. The nice thing about this river is it accommodates a lot of different sort of ability levels. You can take someone down who's, who's relatively new to the sport or you can challenge someone like me who's been a professional for 20 plus years. So it's one of the beauties and having it so close to Calgary and being dam controlled, you know you're gonna get a release of, of really good water. Typically, we have a full on release from about mid-May until mid-July. Then after that, they'll run the river uh, for a midday period, and they're very good about doing that. And then also in the evening for some of the people that are working during the, the, the day, they can come down here at nighttime and uh, get a chance to paddle as well. The dam said they were gonna turn on at 12 o'clock today, and it is now 12.40. So it takes about 40 minutes for the water to start arriving here, and another five minutes for it to fill up and start to actually fill the river. I guess I love the people, I love the sport. Uh, it's very dynamic and you know, you've got the people that are looking at the high end, the high risk, but you also have a lot of people just out there having fun, enjoying this beautiful location, uh, seeing something that nobody else gets to see and uh, really having a fun time on it. I really wanna try and encourage people to, to see us come down uh, and uh, be part of our community. Welcome back to the Provincial Kayaking Championships here in Bow Valley Provincial Park on the Kananaskis River. Beautiful, beautiful canoe meadows. We're having a fantastic day out here, Chuck. And let's have a quick review of the leaderboard now going into round two of the Women's K1 Open. 
Slalom Kayaking Alberta Provincial Championships. In first place, currently we've got Haley Daniels with a time of 148.99. That's right. In second, we've got Hannah Penner with 152.13. And in third, Veronica Ozkowski with 209. What do you look to see coming here into the second round, Chuck? Well, those ladies all have you now put down a nice solid first run. And so they can now go out and sort of push down that and, and see what they can do for a second run. See if they can and pull a couple of seconds. And they all took penalties. They all took penalties. So, you know, you knock two, four, six seconds off your time. That puts you, that bumps you up. Absolutely, absolutely. So clean runs being one of the things they definitely want to concentrate on here in this second round. I think our first competitor is just about ready. Let's get down to the water for Jocelyn Taylor. My name is Jocelyn Sage Taylor and I'm from Calgary, Alberta. I'm 13 years old and I've been paddling since I was four. I see her smiling every time we're on the water. She just has so much fun and every time I go to give her feedback, she's just listening and keen and just always wants to learn more. I want to go to the Olympics with slalom and I picked slalom because I have full control over the boat. I'm a cadet but I'm racing junior. I feel pretty good about racing in a higher category than I am. I feel good about it because I feel like I'm good at stuff and I should do well. Is it a clean run she's looking for here, Chuck? Clean run, she had a good run last time. She took a, top, a couple touches at the top and she did it again, right? Gate number one, she goes out and knocks the poles with her bow of her boat. So she just needs to sort of just settle down, keep clean, stay in her lines, and have lots of confidence, right? Right, and that's a time and experience thing. Yeah, and she's only 13, right? So she's, look how nice she made that turn. Now up, up, up. She's got to catch, oh, she's going to miss that gate. She's coming back into the Yeti. Right, she so spun that, and then she just there. didn't have enough power to get over in time to get that gate. So she's going to go back up. She's going all the way back up. Rather than take that 50-second penalty, right? And then she makes the gate easily. Then she might be able to shave that time back off at the bottom half of the course. Yeah, yeah. So she's going to make sure she stays the boat on line, keeps it moving. Tries to avoid sort of letting that boat go, and she sees she's far back behind that gate number five. So she far. wants to be closer to that, those red gates when she's going up through them. She wants to be just right behind them. All right, coming down into the double reverse. So that, that's a much better upstream for Jocelyn. So she's right behind the gate. She's got to go up high out of this little on this little wave so she can get away over again. All the way across. And she's got to reverse in here and then spin for the air. I think the course designer is kind of it's the that, same move twice, right? <laughs> seems to be, and that, that <laughs> spot seems to be the flipping point. But down into 15, 16 in the double up gates. Oh, that was a very nice S. She just sort of slid across there and out the other side. Very slick move by Jocelyn. And she's through and down into the final charge to the to right. the finish. Big pull there by Jocelyn. And a final time of <clears throat> 223.05 with penalties. Right, so it didn't improve upon her first run, and the big thing was she didn't get the chance to. She missed that one gate, so she that had to go back up. one miss just hurt her. That was the 10 seconds she needed. Gemma Groschmal. Gemma Groschmal now run number two. Charging hard into her gates. Nice and clean through first two. Into first upstream on three. Yeah, Gemma's doing really well here. She's just yeah, nice up there, so she's right behind the gate. And then Very in tight. and out really quite quickly. It was a very tight turn into the gate. 
Nice big spin here. Now she's got to get over and then up, up, up on that wave. So she get that over onto the next gate. Here That's a very challenging spot. Little little touch there with the helmet. So that's a two second penalty, but she made the gate and her head went through the gate. That's the, the telltale point. So if your head- As long as the head passes through the two gates. And again, posts. see nice up there, right behind the gate. A little bit of a chest touch on the post. A lot more confidence that time than the first runs. So she really sort of paddled up into that big foaming water with a lot of speed and that just sort of allows her to shoot out of there very quickly. Now, Gemma must have been disappointed with her first run of 314, so she really probably wants to make up some time on this one. Well, she took that 50 second penalty, remember in the first Missing run? Missing that one gate, yes. Having a much better run this time. All the way across into 12. Yeah, she didn't get a whole lot of time to, to focus. That's the gate she missed in the first run, trying to do that reverse. And Got then it this time. Little touch, but better to touch and get the gate than to miss it. That's right. Down and in tight into 15-16 on yeah. the two upstreams. She's got a good time going here. She's behind Haley, right? But Haley's, you know, 10 years older and uh, has several or many World Cups behind her. So Gemma's doing a little bit of an really experience good here. difference there. Really on, good go time hard, by girl. Gemma this time. Go, go, go. Big difference into the finish. And a final time for Gemma. 205.75. Very nice run by Gemma this time. Shaving more than a minute off her time off the first run. You know what? And that moves her up into third place right now. Charging now into her second run is Shannon Wagers. First run of 438.75. Shannon definitely wants to have a nice clean run this time. Yeah, well, Shannon had that big uh, flip over in gate number 12 and then took a long time to roll up and she took a couple of uh, penalties there, couple missing the gates. Missed gate penalties as she rolled. Hopefully <clears> this <throat> time will be uh, uh, roll free for her. So that time uh, Shannon came out, she had to get across from gates number four to five, I think this is. And uh, she let her nose just swing down too fast and didn't have enough uh, cross current speed there. That's why she ended up so far from the gate there. Exactly. Uh, and now she did, she overcompensated for it. This time she was a little too high on the gate. So now she, now she wants to sneak her bow underneath there and then go hard up and get onto this wave right beside her so she can get over that next that gate easily. Cross. Slight shoulder touch there on the post. But much better movement from Shannon this time. Good pulse by Shannon. Yeah. Ooh. And again, coming in a little far downstream on that one. She's probably going to take a miss on that one unless she's, she wants to paddle all the way back up. Yeah, she's just taking a 50 second penalty there. because she's, she's taking the penalty. It is so hard when you miss those gates like that and then you look at it and go, oh, that's too hard to come back up. See, that's where she wants to be. She wants to be driving into the eddies. A lot of speed and a lot of force, and that allows her to sort of pop into the eddy and grab it and hold on to it. Now, as far as Olympic sports go, Chuck, the, uh, Olympic kayaking has how many different kinds? There's three events in the Olympic kayak. There's the slalom event like this one. There's the sprint uh, 200 meters and the sprint 1,000 meters. Okay, so the sprint 200 meters, how many gates would you find in that? There'd be no gates. No Just gates. Just a flat, straight out on the lake. See how fast you can push a boat down the race course. Ah, uh, a straight good. line. There are other, another, another um, <clears throat> six events that aren't at the Olympics, like the downriver event, uh, the freestyle event, uh, the marathon canoes, canoe events. We have also uh, events like canoe polo that aren't in the, the Olympics aren't in the Olympics yet, because apparently they're, they're always hunting for new stuff. Right? <laughs> not for summer sports, though. For really? winter sports, there's a real big push for winter sports, but not for summer. All right, Shannon putting up a time of 413.75 on her second run. Better than her first time, but not her best time. Still a little far back on this one. Coming up now, run number two for Renee Oler. Her first run time at 224.06 puts her in good position. If she can improve on that a little bit, she might hit the top top three of the leaderboard. Yeah, remember the first run, uh, Renio had a, a flip, so that uh, would have cost her some time. It also cost her a lot of energy. 
and confident. So here, she's doing a lot better, getting herself into the gate, nice high and out, and really tight to the gate. A little bit of a touch. Well, more up, than up, a little up, bit up, of a touch up, there. But yeah. A touch there, but again, better to touch. Yeah, see this. She nicely positioned herself to go through that gate without touching the second one. It's a lot higher, a lot smoother. Now she's getting herself set up for this big drop over cartwheel corner and into this gate here, this upstream gate. And that number nine. Very nice. Very tight to the gate on that one. Yeah. Lost a little bit on the current there, but very good cut across. Now she just has to get out of there and get see going downstream. See the smile downstream. on her face there too, right? <laughs> you can really tell she's having fun. These kids always have fun on the water, right? It's, it's, it is a, a bit of a, a fun activity because you just lots of smiles. Well, anytime you get to play in the water in the summer, right? Yes. Okay, now getting out of this nice and high again. She's got to get across the river. Into the current to cross. She makes it through 12. Trying to come back across, she's going to come back up again. Yep, she did that. She did that kind of intentionally. So rather than spin hard at 12 and try to make 13, 14, she's going into the eddy to make her spin. It takes a bit more time, but it's a little safer that way. Right. Wise use of the current. So Renio is uh, is on track. She's uh, looking to try and get onto the junior national team next year. Uh, her and Jocelyn and Gemma are all sort of vying for a spot with the other provinces. All right. Well, a very nice time. A 2.08.08 for her. Puts Renio right up there near the leaderboard. Right now, though, leaderboard showing Haley Daniels still in first uh, with 148.99. Hannah Penner in second with 152.13. And rounding out third now, Reneo coming in with 208. I think Gemma beat her in 205. Oh, so right, you're right. I could be wrong. Me, you're right, 205.75 could... for Gemma, right. Canadream has a wide selection of RVs that are available for purchase. New and used Class B and B plus van conversions, Class C motorhomes, and truck campers that are ready to accommodate many lifestyles. Visit our website for more information at canadream.com slash sales. Canadream has a wide selection of RVs that are available for purchase. New and used Class B and B plus van conversions, Class C motorhomes, and truck campers that are ready to accommodate many lifestyles. Visit our website for more information at canadream.com slash sales. Uh, my name is Hannah Penner. I'm from Lundbrook, Alberta. I've been paddling since I was 10 years old, so seven years now, and I plan on paddling for another 10 years to come. I've been paddling with my brother ever since I started, and it's really a huge motivator to get out there with your family and be able to train and push each other. Well, the way I came in might have been a bit tighter than No, you no, you, you, you guys just coming on a backstroke, Hannah, and really, Layer out the okay, paper on the front. Show me how it's done. just the opportunity to be able to go fast all the time, like really as fast as you can. I love the variability. It's, it's always different and you never know what to expect. In 2014, I went to Junior World Championships um, in Penrith, Australia, and I placed 19. Ultimately, I'd like to make it to the Olympics so probably the 2024 Olympics. Okay, so we should see Hannah sort of pick this up. She knew she where she was, so uh, she's got a really good solid first run, and now we can see her, expect her to sort of explode out of her second run. 
Had his first run time of 152.13, kind of set the bar nice and high. Haley was the only one to crack that code. Yeah, she's a really strong paddler, uh, quite powerful, and now we just have to work on some of her technique in the up gates to sort of improve her ability to get in and out of the gate quickly. So I'll see her come in here, carve that edge, and now power out. A little touch there by the paddle on the post. But <laughs> Maybe otherwise, the fairly judged, clean see run it. so far. <laughs> Puffing hard, pulling hard. Now, how good of a workout is this if you're spending a couple hours on the river every couple of weeks? Uh, every couple of weeks? No. This is every day. These girls are paddling every day pretty well. Maybe a, maybe it's uh, interrupted by some gym time, but the river, the lake sessions, uh, they're getting out uh, and paddling at least an hour every day, sometimes two hours every day. So... That boat time, though, shows. If they're, if they're in the boat, obviously, they, they have that uh, little bit more wherewithal as far as river usage goes. Yeah, the river usage, the ability to hold their, the boat online, plus also the ability to stay in condition and you know, not let the fatigue as you're coming on these bottom gates wear on you. Hard charge to the end and a final time of 152.02, almost right on with uh, her first run time. <clears throat> That's good. That shows consistency, shows really good purpose, right? So she took a touch in there, but the big thing was that she's very consistent in what she was doing on the line she kept. And that keeps Hannah in second place for now. We're gonna get, here comes Roxanne Esch, run number two, Roxanne's first time at 214.54. Like to improve upon, but touches like that certainly aren't gonna, aren't gonna help. No, that's right. Uh, you know, it's gonna happen sometimes, your boat's gonna just pop in, in unexpected places. See Roxanne's fighting to control her nose of her boat as she leaves gate number three and then over to gate number four. And that allows her to get nice and high into gate number four. That's the experience showing here. Into that tight to the rock. As I was saying, the, when after her first run, Roxanne had some major back surgery. She, basically, she couldn't walk. And she just did a whole lot of rehabilitation to get herself back into condition and allowed her to get back in her boat. It's one of her favorite pastimes. Well, that's a great... The showing of great recovery there to come back from such a, a big injury now. With Roxanne here, we've got three more competitors after her. Who do you see coming out on top here, Chuck? What do you think? Well, it'll be Haley. I think, you know, no doubt Haley's going to have the have the best shot at uh, staying on, on this. But uh, if we can see uh, one of them crack into the top three, uh, you know, there's some, some good, powerful women here that could knock... Knock Veronica us. had a good run earlier, so it looks like we, we might see some competition from her for here. Yes, right. Roxanne doing a great job so far. Only one little penalty showing. <clears throat> and down and across to the backwards 12. Yeah, and surf across this little hole. She's got to get back across that and then through these two little offset gates and then into the S move. Now, who designs the courses? Uh, usually one of the coaches or a, a team of the coaches will design the course, course and uh, they try to come up with a nice smooth course that will test the ability and also make sure it's safe. What are the, what are the uh, must-have challenges? The must-have challenges, we have to have six upstream gates, must, a minimum of six upstream gates. You have to have a couple of the offset moves where you're sort of not necessarily lining all the gates up in, in sequence. And uh, final push for Roxanne, putting up a time. 207.25, shaving a little time off of her first run, but not quite enough to crack that top three, just outside the top three. Yep. Good run by Roxanne. Now on to run number two. This is Jasmine Harvey. Jasmine's first run time was 216.81. Little touch on the first gate there. Everybody they won't seems to help. be getting caught by that bounce. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tricky, you know, you're just trying to keep that boat running and, and then all of a sudden the, your boat mount bounces on you. Water has a mind of its own, like you were saying, right? That's correct. But she's doing good here. She's recovering nicely, staying mentally sharp, not letting that distract her too much. You know, knowing she's got to sort of try and Stay calm and focused and stay on the line she had chosen with her coach earlier. 
So she's doing a really good job there, keeping the boat running. How many judges do they have on course to keep an eye on all the gates? Each gate has its own gate judge. So each, each gate will have somebody there that's watching it, and then they'll back each other up as well. So kind of like a, 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 a second backup to the backup. That's having right. Having three gates around you at all times. So sometimes you just don't have the right angle to check and see. Did, I, did the head go through the gate? Did they actually touch the gate? So it might be obscure. I know at the Nationals, they didn't call me for any, as many gate touches as I had, <laughs> which was nice. <laughs> so that can be advantageous then, right? You can use that to your advantage sometimes. Backwards through 12. Oh, she missed that gate? Touch. Oh, that's going to count as a missed gate for Jasmine. That's going to be 50 seconds. Because her head didn't go through the gate. Her body, you know, her body was right there. Her boat was right there. But her head didn't go through the gate. So they'll call that a 50. Back she had a good run ups. here too, right? Yeah, that had been a great run for Jasmine. Finally, the double up. 15, 16, and down. A hard charge through gates 17 and 18. With that missed gate, Jasmine's final time is 2.59.09 in round two. That's definitely going to not be enough for top three contention. Yeah, and with that, you know, without that 50-second penalty, it would have been 2.09, so she would have been in the top, you know, the top, top echelon. Top five for sure. Run number two now for Veronica Ozkowski. 2.09.03 was her first time. Veronica once again out of where? Veronica's out of Pinch Creek, and uh, she lives just close to the little town, the hamlet of uh, Beaver Mines. Her family ranches up there, and uh, so she has a, a very unique background. She's also a freestyle skier, uh, and really has a passion for that. She's now going to University of Lethbridge, so uh, so she returns to school in another week or so. Student athlete. All, they all are until they become, you know, adults and earning money, and then we just all become just <laughs> right. weekend warriors. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hobbyists, we are called. <laughs> Veronica having a very fast run so far. Yeah. Up, up, up. carve into the reverse gate of nine. So she's going upstream there, and then just get out, get out and go, right? So there's nothing else that she has to worry about for another 100 meters downstream or 50 meters downstream. So she can just get that boat moving in that fast current. Get lined up for her offsets. And then over to gate 11, she can see she's driving to go sideways into that so she can get a really good cut on the eddy. Let's get up high up here so she's got lots of space for her move into this. She did a direct move there. So she spun, instead of doing a reverse, she spun her forwards. And she's doing that very nicely. She actually made that move very nice. Still a very clean run for Veronica here. Only a couple of touches. So that's very nice time for her. Yeah, Veronica is, is one of those athletes just right on the cusp of, you know, just making a transition over. It's a matter of getting that time in the boat and spending some more time to, to work on her skills. All right. A hard charge to the finish by Veronica gives her a 2.05.25 for a final time, improving her standing a little bit, but not quite enough to catch Haley Daniels, our leader. Yeah, but she knocked out Gemma Groschmel by half a second. All right, so up into third place for Veronica Oskowski. And now Haley Daniels, our final competitor here and our current leader. So basically she's competing against herself in her own time. That's right. So she'll, you know, the, the women are compared against the men by a percentage. And typically we're looking at a 10% percentage uh, time. And so she'll go against and look at what she did against the boys later in the afternoon and say, okay, was I within that 10% of where I need to be? And that's where you start to distinguish between elite athletes and, and athletes. That's right. So we're starting to get into our, our world championship competitors and our Olympian competitors when they start looking at those aspects of shaving time. Correct. Right, and you know, this really, you know, she's had a very good run to now. She's probably five seconds ahead of everybody else I've seen going into Carville Corner. Really good use of her boat. And look at how fast she's, you know, stroking through the water, keeping that boat running. 
Very nice turn into the upstream. Up. Clean through, no touches. Down across to 12. Very nice move through 12. Now she did the reverse, so it's a little slower than doing it direct, but she made it look really quite easy and nice and smooth there. Really great run by Haley so far. Very, very tight. All the way across to the last upstream. And she comes around and charges hard into the finish of 17 and 18. Yeah, I think she's going to do a really good job on her first time. She might improve on her first time. Not quite. Not quite 149.12. Not quite an improvement on her first time, but definitely <clears throat> enough to keep her in the top spot. All right, so a very nice day of paddling here for our K1 Open Women's Slalom Kayaking Alberta Provincial Championships. Our leaderboard at the end of the day, Haley Daniels in with a time of 148.99 in first place. Second place, Hannah Penner with 152.02, doing a great job. And our third place competitor, Gemma, Gro or sorry, it's not Gemma Groshball anymore. It's Veronica Ozkowski with 205. Yeah, those are the our, our unofficial results right now, and we'll have to see if those things stand up. But uh, they, you've got it nailed down. On behalf of Chuck Lee, I'm JP Parsonage. Thanks for watching Chasing Limits on Shaw TV. A glimpse into Western Canada's amateur sports scene and a look at the personalities that continue to chase their limits to make it pro.